How's it? Heavyweight magic. Like only the big boys can do morning combat, instant analysis reaction immediately after Alexander Usyk, your former undisputed cruiser, weight king, moving up to heavyweight and taking all three heavyweight titles to upset the apple cart from one of the biggest stars in the sport, Anthony Joshua. It all went down at Tottenham Hotspurs Stadium there outside of London, 68,000 strong, sweet Caroline, insane crowd, really the best venue and platform uh, for boxing. That's the UK, and that's AJ in the main event. And guys, we got uh, exactly <laughs> what you would want from this. What's this? Heavyweight boxing at the highest level when you're operating in an era, which luckily we are, where you have personalities, you have gr potentially great yet flawed superstars, and you got a bunch of them who are willing to fight one another. We said this could be like a de facto semifinal with Joshua Usyk today, Wilder Fury 3 two weeks from now. Don't disrespect to Dillian White, Andy Ruiz, Joseph Parker. They're still relatively in the mix, but we want – an undisputed champion. We want what we were supposed to get this summer with AJ and Fury. Now, I don't know what we're going to get, and I could not be happier because I'm a Usyk super fan. Well, not because of that, but how could you deny what you saw? The coolness of the space helmet mixed with the performance of a lifetime in which Alexander Usyk raised his game. to like That's the thing I told you guys. I said there's a wild card with Usyk. Yeah, it's 6'3", Southpaw, he's big enough to maybe be able to dance with the, with, the, with the toughest dance partners at this level, to swim but not get wet, as Nazim Richardson used to say, and try to outbox AJ but avoid getting knocked out. But if you watched his cruiserweight one which run, which very few did, why? Because it wasn't on American television for the most part. He beat the top seven fighters in the division one after another, and in the big moments, the unification bouts in that World Boxing Super Series, I mean, he would just raise against Myrus Brightest, Murat Gassi of Tony Bellew after that to higher levels that we hadn't seen before. So uh, I get the, you know, there was some like, okay, that's great, but he's still some European guy that I don't know, right? Can he do this against AJ? It turns out he can. And that's why heavyweight boxing will always be the gateway drug to bring in the casual fans to this great sport. I mean, look, the welterweight division is where the stars are and the biggest and best fights are typically made. But we all fell in love with this game, usually because of heavyweights, you know, whether it was the Rocky movies or whether it was what, depending on what era, if you came up in the 70s, which is probably the greatest heavyweight era of all time. If you came up in the 80s, which wasn't the best era, but you had Larry Holmes taking the crown from Ali and you had Mike Tyson coming on the scene. Or if you're like me, although I did watch boxing in the 80s, if you came up in the 90s, more particularly, when you had Bo Holyfield, Foreman Moore, Lewis, you just had so many players. We have so many players again. They want to fight each other. Wilder Fury 1 and 2 were pretty damn entertaining. AJ Klitschko is one of the best fights of this era. Well, you know what? Like Luke Thomas said on Twitter, for a fight with no knockdowns, which is what happened tonight in Joshua Usyk, this was thrilling as shit. This was a fight of the year contender for 2021 on the biggest stage with the biggest stakes possible, three of four heavyweight titles, one guy unbeaten, the other guy one loss in which he avenged, both guys 2012 Olympians, Usyk at heavyweight, Joshua at super heavyweight. I mean, th this is as big as it gets, and they delivered, and it upset the apple cart. And yes, AJ has a contractually obligated rematch, so we don't, we don't really know, is this going to set us back from finding an undisputed champion next year? Or is this just going to make the journey to get there a lot more fun? Because wake up, folks. Not only is this heavyweight where anything can happen because of one punch, like I said, heavyweight's also crazy predictable from things like Fan Man and the bite fight to just big upsets in big moments. Deontay Wilder may, <laughs> may upset Tyson Fury. We may need to see a fourth fight. But I do feel that because of what we saw tonight, and the buzz being restored and the division being as fun as it is, 2022 is going to be awesome. Two weeks from now, Wilder Fury 3 is going to be awesome. And we're going to get closer to that, that real impossible dream of an undisputed champion. One name, one belt, one face, one division in this four belt, wild, crazy era. Boxing's hard. It's hard to love this batch. It'll break your heart. I mean, she'll break your heart a lot. She'll take all your money too. It's not, it's not cheap. 
Shout out to the zone though. It's not cheap to watch this, but you know, why, why are those sickos like me trying to force boxing into the morning combat rundown each week when all you guys, all you really want is to find out what happened in the first UFC fight of the night, because boxing at its best is unlike anything else. I hope you were able to see that and experience that in this thrilling, dramatic, skillful fight in which Usyk had a bloody and swollen uh, or, you know, marked up right eye. And AJ had a legitimately swollen and damaged right eye down the stretch, but it's Usyk coming away with the decision unanimous 117, 112, 116, 112, 115, 113. How did your boy BC score it? Well, let's go to my prediction. My prediction coming in was that uh, I would predict Usyk was going to win by decision but that he gets screwed. Oh, you predicted that on air. Dude, I've, I've only predicted that in the past. I made money off that, Pat. You remember Golovkin, Canelo won? Your boy BC was at the Vegas uh, books that night going, I know my eyes are going to tell me Canelo, or, uh, Canelo lost, but if I put a little down on this draw at 22 to 1, I know how Vegas works. I know how boxing works. Guys, I'm not trying to say that like, boxing's all impropriety and, and just – you know, in, in ignorant and ridiculous. It's a lot of times those things. Sometimes though, if you're the opponent in a stadium with 60, 68,000 people screaming for one man, the judges could obviously be swayed, especially in close tactical fights like this largely was. Yet boxing got it right tonight. I scored it 117, 111 for Alexander Usyk. That's nine rounds to three. Uh, you want to know specifically what did I give AJ? I gave him round six. I gave him round eight. I gave him round nine. He made a heck of a mid-fight adjustment and came on. I'll get to that in a second. Um, I did want to say for all those people, I didn't check where they were from. They could be from the UK, whatever. But as I'm posting my round by round scores on Twitter and I'm like, hey, five, nothing, AJ, six to one, AJ. I'm sorry, six to one, oh, Usyk, whatever. And people are like, man, you're so blind, you know, BC. Why do you always get the fights wrong? Why are you always lying? Am I really? If you went back and watched Rick and Dal Casimiro again with the lights off and back to black and white feed and, put your SAP button on. Would you score it differently? Did maybe Keith Thurman outbox Manny Pacquiao? I don't know. You got to rewatch it for yourselves, but all you people that hate it on BC, it, it turns out I got it right. 117, 111, which was one of the scores, as I mentioned, of the three judges. Could I have given AJ more rounds? I think I could have given AJ up to five rounds in real time watching it, given how close some of these were. So when you see that third scorecard, seven rounds to five for Usyk, it's still in play, but they didn't screw him, guys. I hate being in a sport where I have to celebrate that, but they didn't screw him. And that's awesome. That's of course, that's awesome. You know how like, like fans that may have gotten jazzed up for Bradley Pacquiao won in 2012. So many of them walked out that door. and was like, I'm, I, I've seen, I've done this before. She's a cheater. This boxing game. She'll, she'll steal and cheat. You know, this is one of those where they got it right. And I think they made fans. And I think that I'm lucky here with a platform on morning combat where a lot of the non-traditional boxing fans that have, you know, kept me at my word. And if I said, look, this is a fight you need to see and credit to Luke Thomas and I this week on morning combat saying, you know, we're all fired up for UFC 266 tonight. Believe me, I am I've got a queued up here. I'm ready, but you have to see this fight and you have to care about it. And you have to understand the stories and who they are. Usyk's not some European mandatory challenger that you never heard of before. Now, technically it was a mandatory challenger. And he is from Europe and you may have never heard of him before, but it wasn't that type of fight. And Usyk won, and boxing won, and heavyweights won. And this was another one that if you took the, the nest he plunged and listened to, I, I hope you were entertained. These are the fights the sport needs. So uh, quick reset before I quickly break this down. Of course, this is your boy, BC, Brian Campbell, the beige one, the BBC with that BDE, one half of the morning combat uh, duo with Luke Thomas. If you, if you like what you hear already, please like this video, subscribe. To what we're doing here we're giving you live shows every monday wednesday and friday 11 a.m eastern in the states on youtube um you can catch that live you also can get tons of bonus content big interviews fun breakdowns you want to get drunk on a roof with chuck mindenhall and break down ufc 266 yeah we got that video for you too on uh, youtube.com slash morning combat all right back to this fight uh the judges didn't screw him so how did Usyk do this guys it was masterful and you knew it as maybe as early as the first round, but certainly through the first three rounds that something big was happening. So what Usyk did, it, it's funny. He used the Chisora fight in which he looked good, but not great. 
Chisora is more rugged on the inside, as I mentioned on Friday's MK show, than AJ is. Not AJ is not a good inside fighter. He doesn't fight dirty. He, he fights stoic. He's up there. He's got a little of Lennox Lewis in him. Works behind the jab. Can finish you with both hands, but not uh, not next level in some of those categories. So I think Usyk was almost purposely standing in range against Chisora as a test for what it was going to be like against the bigger heavyweights. Just sort of big, 6'2", rugged. He fought dirty against Usyk. He went to the body a lot. He slowed him down. Usyk had to grind that out. But Usyk took the platform of what he did there, and he applied it against the six foot six, faster, quicker, stronger, but not as savvy, Joshua. And he stood in front of him at close range, and he constantly fainted to get his shots off. You have to understand what the pressure does. When you are constantly in somebody's face, yet they can't hit you back because you are constantly moving, fainting, using your hands, your head, and you're defensively responsible and slick enough as Usyk is, and as he did early, to to get out of the way of AJ's hard jabs, of his attempts at right hands. What that does over time, if you can take advantage of that real estate, is it mentally cardio-wise starts to wear down your opponent. And in AJ's case, where we've seen a flash chin at times, where his chin is not as sturdy as his fighting will might be, in the first three rounds, especially late in round three, when he wobbled AJ, we saw Usyk implement the perfect game plan. Swim, but don't get wet. Stand in the pocket, move your head, use defense to block all the AJ hooks, yet land meaningful punches. And that's the key. We're like, okay, Usyk can box, he can move, but can he hurt AJ? He hurt AJ early on by taking the quickest pass between path between two points, hard left accurate crosses that were at times snapping AJ's head back that Joshua got to a point when he did a couple little, not, not exaggerated dances, but a little shuffle steps. We were like, oh, oh, he, that caught him. Oh yes. Where I think Joshua started to realize I could get knocked out at this. If I stay at this pace, if I try to play chess with the chess master. And while I'm here to give Joshua plenty of credit for how he adjusted in those mid rounds, he took three of those on my card, maybe took more on your card. I give him credit for that. But what Joshua didn't do and cost him the fight, I think is very clear. And I think, you know, if, and when they do this rematch, you're going to need to see this out of Joshua. He never became the puncher. Can Joshua box in this heavyweight era against the second and third rate guys? The guys who have some elements of danger could win the biggest fight of the year at any given point, like a Kubrat Pulev, an older Povetkin. You know, I mean, he can in the end, Joseph Parker, he's shown brilliant nights at the office boxing against those guys. Yeah, he landed the bigger shots and in some cases got them out of there, but he used his speed and AJ's not a horrible boxer by any means. But who's six next? freaking level and he's crazy and daring and smart and i think uh, aj was too willing throughout the majority of the 12 rounds to try to figure out how to stay boxing with him okay aj made the kind of adjustment where he wasn't getting tagged with the same level of left crosses that he was in the first three rounds and if he had by the way in rounds four five and six he would have gotten out of there Now, I know Usyk gave a very interesting comment where he said afterwards that his corner told him not to go for the knockout to stay on his game plan. I say that's interesting because, I mean, it's smart, right? Don't don't blow your wad. Don't pour out your gas tank and then get caught trying to knock him out. Do what you do best. So in the end, like, because he didn't get screwed, because he didn't gas out, which is a key part I'll talk about in a second, meaning Usyk, he pulled it off. But I think that Usyk put Joshua in a spot where he's like, okay, if you try to box with me, one of two things are going to happen. If you try to box with me on my level, you might get knocked out because your chin is vulnerable enough and I'm hitting hard, accurate shots that can find the mark. And as much as we love power, you knock somebody out with accuracy and usually speed and and you don't actually need that much pounds of pressure to turn that chin and put them on queer street, as they say, or as they used to say, excuse me. Um, And when you're that accurate, like look at that Floyd Mayweather. He didn't have a lot of big knockouts, especially not in his welterweight and junior middleweight run. But go back and watch the tape against Manny Pacquiao, particularly in rounds one, round 10, round 11, and round 12. And what I think you'll see is because Mayweather is so accurate and fast, even Manny Pacquiao is like, you know what, bro? These right crosses are coming in and they're on point and they do hurt. 
they could pile up and do damage. I think I'm going to kind of back up and go the other way. And I think for, for AJ, he, he made enough of an adjustment to take away those punches. But by doing that, he allowed himself to lose rounds because he got, he got, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He got, um, he got his output was forced down. He got, uh, well, he got his weapons taken away from ultimately. So while AJ made the adjustments to not get hit with the big left hand anymore, he wasn't active enough to dominantly win these rounds or to leave no doubt in some of these closer rounds. So, um, you had a new stick was smart enough to say, okay, I'm not going to have the same success I had in these first three rounds, but if I keep this a boxing match, I'm quicker, I've got better accuracy. And if I can keep your output down now, what that did is it turned AJ into a counter puncher only. And it turned him also into somebody who's looking for the big shot. And when he did land some of those big shots, you saw the momentum go in his favor in those middle rounds. But I, I started this long ramp preamble up front saying there's one thing that Joshua didn't do that I think he needs to do in the, in the rematch. And that's become the puncher. I think he was trying to be the counter puncher. He was trying to say, okay, I can't straight up outbox you, but I'm going to try to land the bigger shots. And obviously you heard Roy Jones on that, on the zone broadcast, a key part of Joshua's adapt uh, adaptation. I know you love when I say that was taking a little bit of power off his shots, just so he can touch Usyk and keep him in front of him. And it worked perfectly because it was the middle rounds where Usyk started to fade just a bit, slowed down just a bit. And to look to six credit, I mean, he put out a hellacious pace and it's the same pace he ended with. So yes, you're, you're going to have moments in the middle where we're all like, oh crap, good star for Usyk, but bro, you're fading. I mean, there was specifically that one round. Was it six or seven where AJ started to actually hit him good body shots, big right hands. And you're like, okay, I know how this is going to end. AJ, slow start. But the bigger man's going to be the great bigger man is going to be the, the great small man, as Max Kellerman always likes to say. No, it didn't happen. And that turned into a gamble, I think, for AJ. So you're not you cannot box this guy, but you're trying to be the counter puncher and you're not active enough to win rounds. So the only thing left to do is to go for the knockout. Now, you can just as easily say BC you're being too hard on this guy. He's at a at a accuracy and speed disadvantage. If he goes for the knockout, he's going to get knocked out. Okay. Okay. This is also heavyweight boxing guys. This is also heavyweight championship boxing. This is also unified heavyweight championship boxing. If AJ wants to get to that final round against the winner of Fury Wilder three, and he's the bigger man and his strength comes in power. And he's got a guy in front of him who's slowing down just a bit. I don't think in hindsight, it's the rest strategy to still try to box with him. It won him a couple rounds, but in the process, he stayed fighting at Usyk's speed and pace and he stayed at close range and when Usyk is still fighting at close range off the lead foot and still fainting and still in his face it brings upon a fatigue that I think caught up with Joshua so rather than rolling the dice of going 12 with Usyk and trying to out chess the chess player it's somewhat the same strategy we're trying to say Wilder needs in the third one against Fury you're the power puncher. You got to be the power puncher. It's never going to be easy against a tactician who can stand in front of you, can land clean counter shots. But you got to get him before he gets you. And I'm wondering if that's going to be a big part of AJ's strategy in the rematch. He's going to need his jab a lot more. Usyk took away his jab by being able to swivel away from it at close range. You got to come out and you got to use that jab. But that right hand's got to be behind it. You have to use your physical size advantage against Usyk, which is something he did not do, meaning AJ. Michael Alexander was your referee, a guy I'm not familiar with. You're also not familiar with him. Why? Because he wasn't needed in this fight. Two gentlemen went out there. They didn't clinch more than two or three times. They didn't hang on each other. Vladimir Klitschko is considered like the gentleman of this modern heavyweight era. Yet he did things that were questionable to the rules that took advantage of his size. Why? To protect his chin. Did it make fights boring? Yes. But go back and watch Vladimir Klitschko against Alexander Povetkin. This was prime Povetkin. And while referee Luis Pabon almost needs to be arrested for how much he let Klitschko break the rules and lean on Povetkin, by doing that, by landing one punch and clinching and leaning, he wore Povetkin down to set him up for the knockout. You did not see from Joshua any attempts at being the bigger man. You saw a guy who was trying to out box the, the ch out, out chest the chess master right he's like hey bobby fisher 
let's see if you can have an off night. No, you got to take Bobby Fisher's table and board and flip it upside down on him. Be the bigger man, lean on him, tell him he's not ready for the heavyweight division, be a little bit dirty, hit on the break, lead with your forearms, which, oh, by the way, Floyd Mayweather was a master at. Um, do those type of things that say, okay, you're good, Usyk. But I'm a global superstar. There's my initials behind me in flames. There's 68,000 people here singing a stupid Neil Diamond song for me, brother. So I got to do everything. You're probably not going to, you're probably not going to win a decision against me, although Usyk did. But I got to use, if I'm AJ, all of my strengths. And this is why he is an overachiever in some ways, meaning that he's came to the sport a little bit late, not a great pure boxer, but a great athlete. And I give AJ so much credit for shouldering the load of being a superstar and filling stadiums and winning a gold medal and coming out in the pros and winning big fights and getting up off the canvas to knock out a still having it Klitschko in 2017. And, you know, outboxing these second rate heavyweights and, you know, doing a lot of big stuff. And that's why I'm not going to count him out heading into this rematch. That's why I'm not going to say he's a far fraud and a bust. I mean, you know, he had a hiccup against Ruiz, but he ran it back and got it back. AJ is so many elements of him, the real deal, but there's some, some real flaws and vulnerability that I think go beyond just not having the same technique of, of the true boxers. And luckily for AJ, we're in a modern boxing heavyweight era where there's very few, few pure, incredible, amazing boxers. In fact, there's two of them, guys. <laughs> like, sorry, you know, like there's Tyson Fury and there's Alexander Usyk. And everyone else came to the sport late or is more of a bruiser. And that's the weird thing about this Benjamin Button heavyweight boxing division. Boxing is the only sport that has aged in reverse. But like, you know, I, I say this comparison all the time. George Mikan may have been great in the 1950s. You know, maybe been the big, the big man of the NBA. Bro, he's not guarding to the you know, 1999 or 2002 Shaq. He's not doing it. It's just not happening. You know, like the, the era has changed. The skills evolved. The preparation evolved. Genetics evolved. Everything evolved, right? Mike is probably smoking cigarettes at halftime, okay? It's not happening. Yet in boxing, because of the diluted amateur system over the years for the Olympics, because there's not a, a boxing gym on every corner like there was, you know, in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And, you know, it's still the, the outlet for, for, for poor kids, you know, especially from other countries uh, to, to sort of, you know, make a run at fame and, and sport and all that. But I wonder if it's the wake up and realization over the past 20, 30 years, when you see Muhammad Ali in interviews, when he's in his forties and fifties, you see Thomas Herndon. I mean, guys are punched. They're, they're beaten up from, from being great. They're absolutely beaten up. And I think that's fueled the boxing businessman era right now. And you see guys like even Keith Thurman get to a fame level and then they kind of stop wanting to challenge themselves convinced consistently. Um, but it also has created a scenario where, you know, people aren't growing up saying, I want to become a boxer. They tend to like Deontay Wilder fall into it when, when all the other avenues of college football or college basketball, or whatever fall apart. So there just aren't great boxers. And that's maybe why AJ, who's just a great athlete is able to beat most of them. But, but you ain't beating Fury and you ain't beating Usyk with that style. And I think sometimes AJ doesn't realize that in some fights, he's going to have to be the bruiser and the puncher, and he's going to have to go after it. And I think he will in the rematch. I think you're going to see a better performance. AJ is always going to be vulnerable, but you know what? All heavyweights are vulnerable. Even the great Tyson Fury was knocked down twice against Wilder. I mean, this is heavyweight boxing. This is why we love it. So tonight was a monster win for Usyk, yes. But, but for, for heavyweights, for boxing, and I, I think AJ saved face more than maybe his critics will, will, will say. He did go 12 rounds hard. He, he was in this fight on the scorecards, more or less, despite me saying the strategy needs, needs a look at. I know there's always been pressure, especially after the loss to Ruiz, that AJ dropped Rob McCracken and get a new trainer and all this stuff. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that's the answer. I don't know. Um, but... I needed to, to, I don't know. It's hard to say. I want to say I needed, I needed him to make a, an important change midway through. It's being, it's being hypercritical. He was in this fight. He did make the change to get back into this fight. I don't think though, a lot of us, I did because I predicted it, but I don't think a lot of us thought Usyk had that medal in him though. 
because every time Joshua did make a run in the second half or have a great round, you know, and I, and at round eight, it was great. Round nine, he was great. But then round 10 comes around and Usyk's backing him up again. Usyk was able to tiptoe the, the scary eras areas of this fight where his stamina went down, where he did get caught by a couple of big shots, but he never let him get self get caught by the big shot, the one that dropped him or the one that finished him. And you want to know what Usyk's made of? You watch round 12 over again. No one really knows where we're at on the scorecards entering round 12. I think AJ needs to be dramatic. I also fully are preparing for Usyk to lose by majority decision or something like that. And yet Usyk steps on the gas and comes out quickly with left hands. And by the last 30 seconds, he's got AJ on the ropes, looking like he's ready to get him out of there. I counted, I think it was a nine punch combination that Usyk hit in succession. And it, you know, not super hard shots, but he's touch and touch and touch him, trying to set him up for that big one. And you had AJ like bewildered afterwards. That's that's a real fighter, man. It was like that's a real champion. You know, it, it like the story, like you felt, oh, you kind of felt like the story was already written. Like, okay, Usyk, it's cool that you're the cruiserweight undisputed champion, but these are the super heavyweights, bro. You came close. You showed out in the opening rounds. You can't do this over 12. No, he can. And, you know, could he do it again a second time? Yeah. Yeah, he can. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what the betting odds would be, though, if he'll be at the actual favorite. Only because AJ, when you carry that punching ability and that athleticism, and AJ's only 31, so let's not try to say he's washed or count him out too far, whatever. Lennox Lewis lost twice, by the way, guys, in a tough era. Got stopped twice. He also avenged both losses and in, in rematches by knockout. So, um, you know, AJ may, may be our Lennox Lewis of this era. He's not as good as Lennox by any means, but, you know, he may be our version of that. Let's give him that chance. He may end up being even money or a slight favorite over Usyk, but Usyk's in play to have a sh great shot at winning that fight. Can he Usyk beat Tyson Fury or Deontay Wilder? That, that'd be theater, man. You know, he'd have a better chance against Wilder, given that the gap in boxing ability comparative to what we just saw tonight would be much wider, but while they're also, you don't know, you know, fool around either. And he can get you out of there by tapping you. And, you know, in a lot of ways, Usyk does all the, or Fury does all the great things Usyk does just framed out to six foot nine. So that's, that's an uphill battle. But for now, Usyk climbed the mountain in the second division and unified titles in the second division. He's a special fighter. He's undefeated. He was already in my top 10 pound for pound. And this type of win, uh, you know, it cements him if, if you had any doubt. Um, I can't wait for two weeks from now, Wilder Fury three can't wait for the future. Uh, if you're wondering on numbers here, Usyk outpointed Joshua, according to CompuBox, 148 to 123 seems about right. And I really thought, you know, that as much as you could give Joshua some rounds in the middle championship rounds was all, we're all Usyk. That's what great fighters do know this man. And I think the more that you follow him on Instagram, the more that you get into who this guy is, he's freaking hilarious. You know, he wore the Joker suit at the press conference this week for a reason. He's, he's a good guy. He's a, he's a God fearing man and a family man. And you heard him say all about that, about the rematch. Like, nah, bro, I've been training since January. I got to get back to my wife and kids. We'll talk rematch down the road. I mean, you know, I respect that. He, he seems to be a guy who's, who's the, you know, as a man is the real deal there too. So a, gr a great generational fighter. And the fact now that in this era, we've got a few of them. I love it. I, I mean, I love this shit. You know, I love that. I love it. So uh, this has been Brian Campbell getting you, uh, you know, really excited about the future at heavyweight. Uh, salute to, to, to Usyk. Salute to AJ in defeat. He will come back stronger. I expect this rematch to be a different fight when we do, when in, you know, when we do see it. And we will. And salute to, to the next, you know, nine, 12 months of heavyweight boxing. We here. We're not going anywhere. I know the devil, the boxing devil over my shoulder, that biatch is saying, you know, somebody will pop for, for, uh, for clumbuterol soon. Somebody will get COVID. I mean, you know, whatever, but uh, we can celebrate tonight. So uh, thank you for watching. Like, and subscribe. If you like what we do here, there's a lot more. In fact, you're going to, you're going to love the way it looks on you. I guarantee it. My name is Brian Campbell and I approve this video. We out.